Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are logging or you are joining us from. And again, we want to welcome you to this live streaming. Uh, God has allowed us to be in his presence, to hear his word. And uh, as we know, the word of God, that's the mind of God. That's what God wants us to, to hear. So we thank God that we are here today and we are um, about to hear the word of God. Uh, the word of God says, men shall not live on bread alone, but by all the words which comes from the mouth of God. So which, which means it's very, very important that we, we, we listen to what God says so we can feed our spirit. So we want to really thank God that again, he gives us an opportunity to really hear his word. And uh, most importantly, that we retain the word, and most importantly, that we actually put the word into practice is very, very important. And uh, uh, so I, I want to greet you all who are joining us today on this live streaming. And uh, may God continue to empower you and continue to give you the uh, power to uh, put his word into practice. It's very, very important. So I thank God for that. Um, and as, as you, uh, those who have been uh, following us, we have been really um, concentrating on building a lasting relationship with God, which I believe is very, very important um, in our um, work as Christians. And uh, today, uh, before I say my word, and uh, I just want uh, you what pose a question to you. Um, so you start to think about uh, why we are engaging in this and why we are really concentrating on the relationship with God um, because uh, um, the word has been there and uh, probably we've been coming to church for quite a long time depending on when you started knowing Christ and started following him. But uh, my question I want to pose to you today which I really want you to think about is think about how many uh, times you have heard the word of God and probably how many times you have just remained the same even if the word has been spoken unto you. Um, in my experience I have um, traveled around and I've seen really people uh, concentrating on uh, going to mountain prayers, going to waking up in the middle of the night uh, praying to God and uh, doing quite a lot of other things which uh, suggest that they are Christians, they have turned um, to, to God. But my question I want you to think about today is that why is it that uh, our life remains the same? I'm not talking about um, any, any of the physical things or any of the material things because that we can touch on another topic. But I want you to think about why is it that uh, you remain the same probably in your, in your spirit. Just ask yourself that question. Um, and when you really have concentrated and, and, and really thought about it, you probably start to think about uh, or question your, your actual relationship with God. Because uh, there are scriptures which we are going to go into today, which demonstrate something about um, our relationship with God. Um, uh, it's no point we come to church and we just hear and then we go back and we are the same. Um, we come another Sunday, we hear the word and we go back. Um, we come to church again another Wednesday for cell group, we go back. Um, and actually probably the very thing which you have been taught at church, probably you're not able to implement it um, even if the chance presents itself. How does the chance present itself? It presents itself by what you go through in life. So what you go through in life uh, tests what you have learned from the Word of God to see whether you have really um, understood the Word of God and whether you are now going to use the Word of God um, into practice because that's the, essence, that, that's the real reason why you hear the Word of God and then you equip yourself and that uh, when the chance presents itself, you, you really showcase that you have um, mastered the, the word of God and you have really understood and you are now putting it into practice. But most of the time when we face such situations, we are probably always crying to God why God has left us 
and all sorts of things we, we say. But maybe it's, it's a time, it's a chance where you can start to showcase that you rely on God, you trust in God in any situation. And uh, even whatever your brethren may do or say to you, um, it's a chance now for you to forgive your brethren and to love your brethren and to pray for your brethren as we have gone through this um, series of teachings to say that if Jesus, when he was uh, teaching, he actually says that he, uh, you, you need to love those who even persecute you and you need even to pray for them. But let's, uh, when a chance comes for you to pray for your brethren, that's a test. Are you going to withstand the test? Are you going to be there and uh, are you going to uh, bless your, your, your enemy even if they have done something wrong to you? That's, that's a test for you. So we want to come to a, a, a critical situation where we start you know, to implement the word of God. That's what is very important because then that will help us to, to grow and really to have impact in the world, to really have impact in our relationships, to really have impact in those or to those who do not know Jesus Christ. Because remember, when we are Christians, we are Christ-like. The word Christian came after Christ and it actually gone. So people were named after because they were following Christ. So they're Christians. So if we are Christians, we have to behave like Christians. When we are Christians, we have to demonstrate to the world that we are true Christians. When we are Christians, we have to abide by what Jesus says and uh, to be the models of uh, um, the, the, the people who, who know Jesus Christ. So today, ask yourself a question. Why is it that maybe certain aspects of your life, you know them, where you remain the same even when you've heard the word of God quite a, a lot of times? And in general, I want us just to think about what is it that stops you from from doing what God says. Now I'll also touch on that again today, which is very, very important. I'll give you a very live example, very, very uh, practical example, so that you start to um, to appreciate what we are talking about here today. So um, we covered quite a lot of things in um, talking about what Jesus has taught, because remember, and I want to repeat this, for the sake of those who may not have been following us, but uh, Jesus gave us a task to go there for and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the true task which every Christian really has to understand and know. So if you are a Christian or if you are a church or if you are an organization who worship God, if we don't take that task, it means that we are ignoring what our, our Lord Jesus Christ said. He actually said in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, um, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, teaching them all what I have taught you. Look, I am with you until the end of the age. So we believe the Spirit of God is with us until the end of the age, until the coming of Jesus Christ. We believe the Holy Spirit is with us. Remember, in the book of John, the Bible says Jesus was teaching his disciples is that he, it's better for me that I go and that I send you uh, the comfort of the, the Holy Spirit, that he will be with you. So we believe we have got the Holy Spirit. Um, but the task for us is really to obey what God has actually said that we need to do. So it's very, very important. Um, and... Uh, we want to uh, just remind you that uh, when, when the Bible talks about uh, making disciples of all nations, teaching what he has taught, Jesus taught us, it's not for any particular individual or any particular group of people, but we have in so, so many ways, we have got opportunities on how we can actually um, contribute or teach or or actually be part of this whole process of making disciples of all nations. By our deeds, if we are Christians, if you are Christians, people may want to learn from you what is Christianity is all about, what is it Jesus will do in this particular situation. So we become like models so for others to follow, those who, are, who do not know Christ, so that they can actually start to follow. The Bible in the book of 1 Peter, I believe, uh, chapter 3, 
uh, when you start from verse 7 going downward downwards i believe the bible talks about um that the the the, the women the women women need to um do good works so that even if there are husbands who do not follow Christ, who start to follow Christ by the mere um, observing observation of seeing that this person is doing is according to what God does or Christ does, so they start to come to Christ. So that's what I'm talking about: being models, being people who can demonstrate. Not only talking, because many people are very good at talking. People can be at the pulpit and talk and talk and talk, but when they are af after the pulpit, they can do certain things which is contrary to what they actually have been talking about. So it's about really the, the practical bit of what we say every day. It's very, very important because uh, uh, there's a saying which says, action speaks louder than the words. So when we are doing something, when we are acting in a certain way, you see, see people can then learn much more uh, than when we say certain things so they can observe and see what we are doing. So we, we as Christians, we need to make sure that we, we, um, we understand who we are, we act in the way we have to act. That's why the Bible say, teaches us that we need to act or we need to live according to, um, to how God has called us. It's very, very important. So, so that's what we've been t teaching about. We talked about quite a lot about uh, we as individuals, how we can, um, we can grow in our relationship with God, but to learn certain things like loving God and making sure that we, uh, we, we understand that we have not been given a spirit of timid, but we've been given a spirit of power, self-control, and love. We've talked about all those. But really, we are coming to the real... Um, real climax of all this the issue is that we need to understand that uh, the relationship with god once we have got a closer relationship with god that will then help us to even be obedient to his word so let me give you a very good example once god becomes an authority in our lives then whatever he says we'll do it now give you a very good example a very good example uh, in your life as you yourself maybe you go to work you do certain things but let me say give an example that you go to work so your work becomes an authority in some ways that you don't need to be told by anyone not to be let to let to work you, you really know that you have to um, you have to be work uh, early so you have to run you have to be there in time you have to you have to do it and because why work becomes authority in your life uh, in, in some ways where you don't even need to be reminded by anyone, but uh, you become to understand that uh, before you've been told that you really have to be there in time. You have to behave well at work. You have to do, so work becomes, so your, your employer becomes an authority in your life and you start to do uh, what, what they ask you to do in terms of the work. So unless, so unless, unless if God has become an authority in your life, it means that you will not be able to follow what he's actually saying because you you you, you can as you want to see in our in, in, in our sermon today but he, as long as you have not allowed god god has not become an authority in your in your life you find it quite difficult you, you do it in, you, in the way you want simply because you have not allowed the word you have not allowed jesus christ you have not allowed god himself to be an authority in your life so it's very, very important. Um, so, so many people, we go to mountain prayer, we do certain things, we could do quite a lot of things. But um, if our relationship with God is not that close, it means that certain aspects of the, the Bible will not, will, will, not, um, will not have an effect in us because we have not given us ourselves as a world that we are now the children of God um, so we are going to, um, to to read the Bible but uh, um, I want to emphasize the fact that uh, as long as we have not allowed God to be an authority in our lives it means that we um, will struggle to do certain things which God has asked us to do um, so today we are just going to um, look at a uh, at few scriptures um, and then we, we, we go on to, um, to, to understanding why I 
I really think that when we have a, a solid, a good, and intimate relationship with God, then we'll be able to do that which He wants us to do. So we are going to read some scriptures today. So we are going to read um, from the book of from the book of uh, John, chapter ten. So I want us to read uh, John chapter 10. I want us to read verse 4 and I want us to read verse 27. So I will read. So I'll start uh, John chapter 10 and verse 4. The Bible says, When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. That's number, verse number four. Verse number 27, the Bible says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I'm going, I'm going to read verse three so that probably you just see, understand where, where it's coming from. Let's, let's start from verse three again. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own as he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. So verse 4 then says, When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. So that's a, so for us to, to understand the, the fourth verse of it. And then verse 27, the Bible says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So, so basically the word of God is telling us uh, here uh, about a relationship um, for the sheep and the shepherd. And I want us to understand this. This is very important. And I know many people open this verse and they, they, they say quite a lot of, the, of things, which I believe help us to understand more. But today I want us to understand from the fact that uh, these scriptures have really explained a deep relationship between um, the sheep and the person who is actually um, shepherding the sheep in this in this. In this instance, it's actually Jesus. He say, he's saying that uh, my sheep, they know my voice. They follow me. But in verse 4, he says that uh, he goes ahead and they follow. Um, let's pay particular attention that uh, Jesus is not talking in terms of him being at the, at the back and, and, and pushing uh, the sheep. But he's talking about him being ahead and the sheep following. That's an intense relationship between a sheep, uh, the sheep and the shepherd. Mm. So, why I thought this, uh, this, 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 this message of relationship will really help is that um, it will get us to a level where we understand the intensity of relationship because the relationship goes with the level. Uh, I'll give you a very good example. A very good example is today, if I ask you a very simple task, uh, let's say that uh, I ask you for a, a, a task or for maybe let, just give me a call after this, uh, this, this service. Many people will be able to do that because it's a very simple task. But when the task become a bit harder and, and harder, it now depends on our relationship for you to be able to actually do it. Because once you find it hard, you it, it say that you just say, I, I can't just do it. But when you have got an intense relationship, an intimate relation, relationship with a, so a relationship which is very close with, with someone, you tend to do what they ask for. It is very, very simple. It is, it is very, very simple to understand it from that point of view. Um, because 
here the bible is now teaching about the relationship with the sheep and the and and the shepherd they 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 know who jesus is they they follow they don't have, they don't have to be told they don't have to be um you know to be encouraged in any way because they know already as as the the bible says as the door is open he just calls them by the name they just follow that it's because i, I believe under what we are not understand, what we are not seeing, or what we are not uh, uh, told, is that is already about the relationship which has been built over time. It's a relationship that that's what makes you to do those things to follow. So as long as we do not have a closer relationship with with God, we tend to ignore sometimes what He says. But now once we have got a, a, a deep relationship with, with God, then like I've just given you an example, that we, you find it difficult not to do it because your relationship is just that intense with God. You know, uh, when he asks you to follow, you just follow because already the relationship is there. And I want you to understand from the point of view that, he, you know, Jesus is ahead or the shepherd is ahead and the sheep, uh, are behind. Now let us think about our, our own relationship, like let's say a leader and the church member or, 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 or just any relationship which we have sometimes. Sometimes the relationship, they are, they are, they are not ex exactly as what the Bible is explaining. The Bible is explaining a relationship where the sheep knows that the shepherd is the one who knows where we're supposed to be going. The sheep knows that uh, um, no matter what, the shepherd knows exactly and is actually in control. There's a full trust amongst the sheep that uh, you know the shepherd will take us somewhere. And uh, the shepherd will take us where there is some food we need to, to eat because the, the, the whole essence of a shepherd is to look after the sheep like giving the, the sheep what to eat and also making sure that the sheep, they are not vulnerable to, to predators. So it's a relationship which shows some trust and in the, in, in, in the, in the high level of trust and a high level of dependence as well, to know that I depend and I rely on what actually the shepherd is actually saying. That's exactly what God is looking for and that's exactly what Jesus is looking for, a close relationship with him so that when he says, he becomes an authority figure in our lives. And that when we read about what Jesus actually says in the scriptures, we don't have to be pushed in any way to do anything. But already he has spoken. The Bible says, then my sheep know my voice. So they know that the Lord has spoken. And, and, and they go on to, to actually do it. Now, we need to understand and uh, we, we need to know that um, our, our, the relationship we can build with God is, is never to, uh, for us to lose anything, but actually it's for us to gain everything. Because if our Father is the owner of everything, if He is the Lord and if He is the King of all kings, and if He is the one who has been given all authority in heaven and, and on earth, it means that we should not fear. We only fear if our relationship is not that close. We only fear if our relationship has not got to that close. That's why we are really teaching in terms of us understanding the impact and the, the reason why we have to build an intense relationship with God. Now I go back to the question I asked you. I asked you a question. Now what then happens is that uh, what remember last week we talked about uh, the bible from the book of ephesians if you still remember where the apostle paul thanks god and, and saying that he has given god god has given us all the spiritual gifts um in heaven through jesus christ and we're explaining the fact that he has already given us it's not that he's going to give us but he's already given us the declarations which he has already made there for us 
But it's for us to get to that level of understanding and to that level of for faith and that level of trust and that level of understanding that he is the Lord, he is God, he is the one who is above everything. So when we have just done build that trust and that relationship, that's only when that can um, actually these scriptures can start to have an impact in our life. He has already declared, remember the Bible says, if he is for us, then who shall be against us? Now, if he is for us and he is the one who has got the, all the authority, if he is for us, then who shall be against us? You understand? So, when we believe and when we know that, it means then that it, it applies to us. It's just like faith. When you, when you, faith, when you believe that what you don't have, you have it already. So it's about faith. It's, it's, it's to have that belief and have that relationship where start, things will start to happen because I believe and I have confidence and I have trust and I know that the Lord is actually in control. Now, we will move to another, another um, scripture which I also want to, to talk about. But, but, but my point I want us to understand is that last week we talked about uh, that uh, we have not been given a spirit of bondage. And I think we've spoken about that already. That we have not been st when Paul was speaking to Timothy, he said, uh, remember, you have, been given, uh, you have not been given a spirit of timid, but a spirit of power, self-control, and love. And Paul at that time was actually reminding Timothy because Timothy was in the ministry. But Paul had already gone through what Timothy was going to go through. Remember, remember Paul, Paul um, he had gone through quite a lot of uh, uh, situations and challenges. But he was now explaining to uh, other people or, or writing to other people to strengthen them. And reminding the, the fact that they have not been given a spirit of timid. Because, because timid or fear... It, it comes with a situation, then brings fear, and then you are not able then to do what you are supposed to be doing. You've got the potential, you are able to do it, you can actually do it, but sometimes fear just uh, give a reverse effect of all that. You then stop, and, and then you are fearful. But he now, the Apostle Paul is reminding Apostle, uh, um, uh, Timothy, you have not been given a spirit of fear, but you have been given a spirit of power, self-control, and love. But I want us to talk about what I said last week where the Bible says, you, you have not been given a spirit of bondage, but you have been given a spirit of the sonship where we cry, Abba, Father. And when I was explaining to you, Abba, Father, it just means the closeness of the relationship. Now, the closeness of the relationship, why is it important? It's important simply because uh, you know that if there is fear, it doesn't pertain to me. Or if, the, if there is a threat, it doesn't come unto me because already I'm protected. Remember, you've been given all the, all the spiritual gifts. You have been given all the declaration that you are the children of God. For those who received him, he gave them the power to be called the children of God. So, you have, so this declaration has been made already. The declaration, the, the declarations have been made already. God has said already. And I actually said, remember, the, the, the world, the, how God created the world was about the word. He said it and it became. So with the same voice, he declares. He declares that he, a lot of declaration he has made that we, we have been given the right to be called the children of God. It's a declaration. He has declared that he, he has been, he, he has been, Jesus has been given all authority both in heaven and on earth. And if we are his children, it means that he, that power also resides in us as well. Remember, be in me, then I in you. Ask for anything, I'll give it to you. So it's all the declarations that have been made. But it's if for us to rise to start to understand and trust and to know that, that these things pertain to us. Sometimes it is about breaking the bondage. And last time we, we, we did have a theme of breaking the bondage of tra traditional thinking. These are things which has just tie us to s certain ways of thinking. And uh, I, I remember there was one person who uh, drew a cartoon where a donkey wa was tied, or an elephant, I believe, was tied, tied to a, a tree. 
But later on, they removed the, the tree and then they put a, a something very simple like a, a chair. But because in their mi the mind was still thinking that they are in bondage, the, 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 the elephant did not move. So it meant that the, the freedom was there, but the mind is still under bondage. So if Christ has, if Christ has died for us in the cross, and the, the Bible says it, it is finished, it means that the declaration has been made. But it's about us now to, to make sure that this relates to you as an individual. That's where the critical point is. <laughs> the, the word of God is full of, of victories, which God has already declared for us. The word of God is full of the promises which God has already made for us. Remember, he has given us all the spiritual gifts through Jesus Christ in heaven. So all this has been said, but how does it relate to us is the question. Now, when we, we, we do not have a solid relationship with God, that's what it becomes. Even if God has done all this for us, we'll still be in bondage. Remember, and I want you to remember this, when the children of Israel had been taken out of captivity and they had crossed, um, the, the issue was that when Moses had, had gone to the mountain as God had called him, they started to think that uh, Moses was not going to come back. So therefore, what did they do? They started to um, they, they convince Aaron to make a calf for them so that they can worship a calf. So you can clearly see that there wasn't any relationship with God. There wasn't any relationship with God because they, if there was, then people would say, no, our God has taken us this far. We still trust the same God. So we cannot worship in our other idol. It, it, it comes with a relationship with God. So that's why we are really, because at the end of the day, we, we have got a lot of Christians who uh, 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 in, in the body of Christ where, where probably we just come to church and just hear what has been said, but we don't take any effort whatsoever to really make sure that uh, this pertains to us and build that relationship with God. Now, I want us to focus on the, um, on, on, in, the in the Bible, I want us to focus on the, on, on the book of Psalm. Just give you an, a, good, a very good example. Um, so we, we build a relationship with God so that whatever it is that God then says relates to us. And whatever declaration which God has actually said, it relates to us. That's why uh, even we as the, the body of Christ, even if Jesus says he has been given all authority, both in heaven and on earth, but we still struggle in terms of our faith, in terms of our belief, our trust, and uh, we still stumble when someone says something probably just bad to us um, and uh, we'll probably even stop coming to church. I, I, in as much as I do not want to say it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's being immature, but it is. Simply because um, whoever said anything bad to you does not possess the kingdom of God. And whoever said anything bad to you does not hold the keys to your blessing or to your salvation or to the power which God can actually give you. See, so that's where we get, uh, that's where we stumble. So we, we fail to look beyond whatever it is that we may go through. What we may go through may just be a test or may just be something which just uh, people in life go through. So we're going to have to see beyond um, that obstacle or that temptation. But today we're going to uh, just focus on the book of Psalm, um, chapter Okay, so Psalm 23, we know Psalm 23 very well, and I'll probably uh, read it uh, quite so often. Um, but 
we are going to read okay so let's psalm 23 the bible says in this one says the lord is my shepherd i have everything i need um he lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water he gives me new strength he guides me in the righteous path as he has promised even if i go through the deepest darkness i will not be afraid lord for you are with me your shepherd's rod and staff protect me you prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me you welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life and your house will be my home as long as I, I, I live. Okay. Now, so, uh, as you have just read, as you have just seen in the scripture, you can actually see in that uh, our Lord has already declared victory in every aspect of our life. When we think about security, when we think about provisions, when we think about uh, protection, we think anything you can think about is already covered in that scripture. But it can only become relevant when we have got to that level uh, of a relationship with God where we believe and trust and know. Because see what happens. The Bible, I, I, I want to, the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. But here comes a, a situation where you, you start uh, facing whether it's challenge, whether it's a financial situation, financial challenge, and, every, and, and, and that kind of thing. But you have just declared, or God has just declared that he, the, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. It means that you have got everything you need. But you need to believe in the relationship to trust in God. That uh, this actually relates to me. And uh, no matter at uh, this period, I may go through a suffering or a challenging situation or a difficult situation. But the word of God still remains. Whatever God has declared in your life is still standing. So, it's one thing to believe that uh, I'm going through this uh, difficult situation for a period, but I still believe and I still know that my God has declared this in my life. And it's one thing to say that if God truly is there, why is it that I'm going through this situation? Can you understand this? There are two different thinking here I am talking about. So, when you know that he, he, the Lord is your shepherd, you've got everything you need, it means that even in, in financial situations as well, he has got something to offer to you. But what you are going through today is not, a, is not, a, a, is not like the end or ev of everything. It means that you may go through this today, but because the Lord has made a declaration already, and if your relationship is such that you believe and you know and you trust in God, it means that that will be just a temporary situation. And at the time when God is willing, God will take you to another level. Of course, there are certain variables and certain things also we need to think about. But I'm only talking here in a very lay, uh, in a layman point of view way, where, where for you to just understand that is very uh, is something which we know that it can be just temporary but uh, god has got even bigger plans for you in, f in, in the future so it's about the relationship you know which we have with your god it doesn't mean that uh, i have gone through this so uh, uh, you know i can't go ahead my, my my life is ended no god has already made a declaration if you are a child of god god has already made a declaration in your life but you're gonna have to understand that you may go through situations, which takes me in my next um, next thing I want to say. It says even if I go through the deepest darkness, <laughs> I'll not be afraid. So which means you have to go at some point through the deepest darkness. You have to go through some some kind of deepest darkness. 
But the thing is that you should not be afraid for the Lord is just there. He's, he's with you. When I was giving an example of a deepest darkness, I've walked in the dark before where you can't see the next person who is a step ahead or in front of you. Is that so you don't know whatsoever that there is someone <laughs> because you can't see them. So even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid. So when you can't see anything, when you can't, when everything is closed, you should not be afraid because the Lord is still there. Let me also say that sometimes God can be silent in your life. But silence doesn't mean that he, he has really rejected you. Or depending on the situation, but doesn't mean that he has rejected you. So it's about to understand that maybe this is a time of silence of God. He's not going to say anything. But I still, you still keep your faith. See, all these things, they can only be possible once we have reached that level of relationship with God. Remember, let's just think about Job. Job he had all, all sorts of things happening negatively in his life. But he never lost his love for God and never lost his relationship with God. Because I believe his relationship with God was that intense. Whereas right now, if any one of us go through just a difficult situation or, financial, or, or whatever it is, we start to question God whether he's there or not, or, or whatever it is that we start to, to question. So that's why we are really emphasizing on the level of the relationship you have with your God. Because then that determines your obedience even. Because if God in your life and in your, uh, in your belief, in your, when you trust in him, he says something, you will do it. Because you've got that close relationship. No matter how difficult it, it can be. That's why you see Abraham was able to give um, his son. And the son he loved most. He was able to give to God. Because the relationship was not um, at the low level. But it was at the high level. Because even though it was at the low level you will start to question God to say, How, why should I give you my son when he's the only son I have? You see, you start to question God in so many ways because the, it, 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 so the relationship sometimes di dictates what you will do. The relationship will detect what you do. But he did not withhold. The Bible actually says that when he was told like today, Right? The following morning, he, he, he started the journey to go and give his son. So you can actually understand the level of relationship. So that's why we are concentrating on this. That's what determines your strength and your, your continuity in, in, in terms of uh, running in the race and going through challenges and still remain standing. Is the relationship you have. So to understand that uh, even in the deepest darkness, the Lord is with you. It calls for a deeper understanding and a deeper relationship with him. So when you have, well, uh, for you to have a good relationship with God, you, you can also know his, what sometimes he does. That sometimes he can be even silent when you when, when you want him to speak you can be silent so you can actually see that oh okay maybe this time i have to go through this deepest darkness and he's not speaking but he's just there you see so it's a level that's why we are saying that it's, it is the level it's it's not only about uh, you know what god can do for you and what uh, what is it that he, you you want from god but actually it's mostly to do with the ability to be able to stand even when things are not going on the way you think they should. Because then you know this is sometimes the nature of God that he just doesn't take you out of. That's why when I, uh, when I was talking the other day, I said, um, God uh, said to, um, to Joshua, be, de be determined. Because God knew that when the battle rages, you don't need a 
person or a man to stand. Be determined. Make a decision that you don't go back. You know, because God knew that he, he was going to in, uh, encounter certain battles which are going to be difficult. So, the life of a Christian is a life where we have to build a relationship with God where we, we, we understand and we know that these things sometimes we face, yes, we face them, but actually we cannot um, compromise our relationship with God. We cannot compromise our relationship with God. The value we give to our God, it then determines whether we are going to um, give up or not give up. So it's the value. What, what, what value? So in a relationship, you start to understand the value. While I'm there, I'm going to talk about, um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the, the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 26, uh, I believe. Let, let us open. Uh, I want us to, to just think about this. Very, very important. Okay, so we open the Bible from the book, book of Matthew. Yes, chapter 26, and uh, I'm going to read verse 39, so you understand. Uh, it says, He went a little further on, threw himself face down on the ground, and prayed, My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. <laughs> this is a very, this is a very deep conversation which Jesus was now making with God, at his times of suffering. He said, "Let uh, uh, take away this cup away from me, but not your will, not my will, but your will." So, in other words, what Christ, Jesus Christ is saying is that he is in suffering. And he, he's saying, if possible, if the cup was taken away. But at the same time, he is understanding that he, you know, it is God who, it is his father who he has got the decision, or his father who is in control. So in, a, in, 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 in the relationship we are, we are talking about, it's when we start to realize that even if you are in a situation, maybe God is one, wants you to go through that situation. So it's about say, may God take away the cup away from me, but not, not my will, but let it be your will, Father. So it's, it's that relationship which where you know that he is in control, he's the Father, he's the, he's the one with the value. And you are a subject where you follow what he wants. That's why Jesus here is saying that not, not my will, but let it be your will. So, sometimes in our lives, we're going to have to let God do something in our lives. Let, let, let him take control. Let him, let him be the one who is the, 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 the one who takes control, who, who does what he wants. So, that scripture shows us a deep relationship between Jesus and his father. But, you know, he had the, uh, the authority even to, to, to defeat the enemies. But he didn't do it because he had to go through, because that was the, that was the purpose for him. So in other words, it's not, we always don't do what we want, but we do what our Father wants. So when you are going through a certain situation, maybe pray to find out, maybe God just wants you to go through that situation. But wants you to understand that he, even in that situation, he is still God and he's still in control. So once we build up to that level now, of a relationship with God, we'll start to allow anything, or, or we'll start to, uh, we'll be ready for anything, in other words. Whereas if we are still very low in the graph, in that relationship, we are still very, um, very naive and we don't even want to anything to touch us. So our prayer mostly are now for all focused on you know that God shouldn't God shouldn't uh, not, uh, should not allow you to be in difficult situations. In our our, our prayer, um, your prayer mostly will be just to that you be, you, are, you are you're always safe, you're always protected, you're always this, you're always that. But sometimes God wants you to uh, wants you to go in another situation, wants you to go to another level, 
wants you to you know to wants you to know his power by going through a, a challenge or a difficult situation to show his power you see you see when when um Shadrach, Mishael, and Abednego, they were thrown into the fire. The Bible says that uh, at, at, at that at that point, they then started seeing someone, the fourth person, who was like the son of God. But it only called for that situation to happen, for the people at that point to realize and see the greatness of the God these three were worshipping. So the greatness of our God sometimes can be demonstrated by when we stand and when we demonstrate that we don't compromise our relationship with God because of whatever it is that we may go through. So it, this is very, very important and, and it is very, very key. So when you have a deeper relationship with God, in other words, you it determines it, so it determines your 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 obedience. But when your relationship with God is not that close, you easily say, or you easily you are easily going to disobey. Like the example I gave you of Abraham giving his son, the one he loved, to God. If that relationship was not that close he was going to easily say he was not able to do it and it's simple that's exactly what happens to our relationship with god sometimes we don't understand and we don't understand the the the, the importance of having that uh, intense relationship with god where you can do anything for him and sometimes when when you're supposed to be doing something you don't understand and you think that you are doing it for for someone you are, you are doing it for your you are doing it for someone Yet, is, if you are doing something for God and you have got the full understanding is for God, it means that there is nothing which you can withhold. If God sends you to go um, to a, a certain place and to, to go and preach the gospel, um, or God sends you to go and, to, um, and whatever it is that he sends you, it depends on the relationship which you have with, with God. When John was sent, Jonah refused to go simply because he didn't understand the level. He didn't have that level of relationship with God he had. Fear was with him. So that's, these are things which you need to know and why, why it's very, very important to build that intense, this good relationship with God. It's very, very important. So that's exactly why we are concentrating on these things. That is, even ourselves as a church, when we start to build that relationship with God and we start to build it, when we start to understand and know God in that respect, it means then that we can withstand anything. And sometimes it's even very important for us, as a, even as a church or even, even whatever, uh, whatever you go to church, to understand what is the purpose of your church. What is it that God sent a messenger in your church? What is it that you are supposed to be actually doing? Because that's, that's, that's what then determines what you're supposed to be doing. So we have to get to another relationship where we know that church going is only not to go and meet and come back. But it's to fulfill certain purposes and fulfill and achieve certain goals. So if everyone understands and knows that we are here to achieve a certain goal, just like a team, if a team knows that each, each member of a team knows that we want to win Let's say a football game, for example. Everyone will put an effort to win. Everyone will put an... If, if you know that you are a member of the team, you all put an effort to win. But if you think that it's for someone's gain or whatever it is you think, it means that you will not put that effort. So, as the body of Christ, we need to understand these things, that we have been given an overall command by Jesus. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look, uh, I'm with, teaching, uh, teaching them what I've taught you, and look, I'm with you until the end of the age. Thus the mandate. It doesn't leave out anyone. It is a mandate to everyone, to anyone. 
So once we understand those mandates and once we build a relationship with God, it means that there's nothing which will stop us to achieve those. But unless, unless we, uh, until we get to that level where we understand that and where we have really um, built our relationship with God and let God be an authority in our lives, until that is, is happened, you still come across these very minor things which disturbs us to achieve that which God has asked us to achieve. The relationship with God is a major factor in whether you're going to be obedient or not obedient to God. Because in a relationship, you, you start to think about what is it that the person you are making, having a relationship with. In this case, when you are having a relationship with God, you understand that He, the power balance, He is the one who is above. And I'm the one who has to listen to what he is saying. He is more valuable. He is the one with value. And I'm the one who have to observe that he is the one with value. So what he says, I follow. And what he says, I do. Because it's, that's the relationship. That's the relationship. But when, we, when God says this and we can't do it, it means that we have not understood the relationship. We have not got to a level where we now understand and know our purpose and our relationship and what we're supposed to be doing. So that explains um, why I think, why I, in our, in, our, in, in our series, that we needed to concentrate on the relationship with God. It's very, very, very important. It's very, it's very important that we, we start to, to build uh, that relationship to that level. Because then, once we have that close relationship with God, it means that we don't have any choice, even in our thinking, not to do what he says. It becomes automatic because he becomes an authority in our lives. So things which, which can be difficult, or which seems to be difficult, they won't be difficult anymore. Why? Because we have built it, we have built that relationship, and we have now acknowledged, we have now known that he is God in our lives. It is very, very important, and it is very, very key that we build that relationship with God. Because then, for example, let me just give you an example where you don't know this person, you don't know uh, where they come from, you don't know, they're just telling you to do something. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you, you won't do it because you don't know them, there's no relationship. But you've got this person, we've got this person who you have a close relationship and you understand and you know them, when, when you, they ask you to do something, you are likely to do it. So in this case, when God asks us to do something, we are, if we have built the relationship with him and we have really uh, observed what God has actually said and we have actually um, concentrated on all what Jesus has actually taught us, if he tells us something, we have now, we have now geared up to that level where we can actually do it. It's about building. Remember the Bible says those who hear the word of God and does not put it into practice, they are like foolish builders who build their house on the foundation of sand. When great rains and great wind comes, that house will fall a great fall. But those who hear the word of God and put it into practice, they are like wise builders who build their house on the foundation of a rock. When heavy rain comes, they withstand because they've got a good foundation. So that's, that's what it is. So when we hear the word of God, when put it into practice, we are cementing our relationship with God so that, uh, you know, um, whatever it is that comes will not compromise our relationship with God. May we continue to understand and may we continue to measure our relationship with God and see where we are and aspire to that level where God becomes an authority in our lives. Then whatever it is that he asks for us to do will never be a struggle. When we now know, when we now have that relationship, it's not going to be difficult now to do. We now know that he is our leader in our life. Remember the Bible in the book of John chapter 10, it says, he goes in chapter, four, chapter 10, uh, verse 4, he goes in front and the sheep follow. 
The sheep knows my voice. I know them. They know my voice. So is that relationship? Because the sheep will just not know the voice just from, no, from nowhere. It's, it's a relationship which is built over time and started to know that this is our shepherd. And that whatever he's taking us, that's, he's taking us to where we can actually um, get some protection or get some food or, or whatever. So it's very important that we, we now know that um, having an intense or very close relationship with God determines our obedience. And I gave you an example of um, Abraham where he had a relationship with God and he ended up even giving his son to God. So it's very, very important that we understand that and we, it's very important that we, in our own personal life, will start to build that relationship with our God so that uh, um, nothing will compromise our relationship with him, nothing will compromise that which he has declared for us already. And we will start to realize and to know that he himself, God, he has given us all the spiritual blessings that we now know that they belong to us. And let me tell you, once that happens, when you hear the word, it, it will just not go like that. But you now, it, 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 it now, you now know that it belongs to me because my father is actually speaking. Most of the time we struggle to ensure that this word belongs us to us or is actually talking to us simply because we have not built that relationship. So it could be saying to someone, it's not saying to me. But once you get to a, a, a situation where we now know that the word is speaking to me, that's where things will start to become different. So my, my plea to you is to really um, follow these teachings which you've been saying and, and read the Bible, your own Bible yourselves and see what Jesus always teach about and start to build that uh, into a relationship with, with, with Jesus and find yourself some time to pray to God and some, find yourself some time, you know, to commit with God, um, giving, yourself, giving yourself to God in that respect. And then when we do that, when we continuously do that, we become his true, ch true children and he becomes an authority in our lives. Whatever it is that we do, uh, what, whatever it is that he says, we are then able to do. We start to understand the language, we start to understand the command, we start to understand the mandate, we start to understand all those things and we are not giving that responsibility to anyone anymore but we are taking the responsibility ourselves. That's why most of the time when things need to be done, even in the ministry or whatever, sometimes we look at other people, we don't look at ourselves. Why? Because we have not built that relationship to under, really understand that this is for me. May God of heaven help you and uh, um, may you start to use this time wisely to start to build your relationship with God so that uh, nothing and absolutely nothing will stand in your way. Let Jesus be an authority in your life and let his word speak in your life. Do not wait to be, to be, to be told to do something but follow what actually God is actually saying. For the word he was given here to say that the sheep, they follow the shepherd. They don't need to and the shepherd to be behind them, you know, holding a, a stick or whatever it is. But the shepherd is ahead of them and the sheep will follow. That's my word today. And again, I want to emphasize the fact that once we have let God be an authority in our lives, it means then that we are likely to do what he says. And I gave you an example at work where work becomes or employer becomes an authority in your life. You don't need to be told about time, you don't need to be told about anything. You find out, you do it, and you do it good because it becomes an authority in your life. So let God be an authority in your life and let God be some, um, um, let, let him be the, your life and let him be the one who 
um, takes care of your life. And I will finish off by talking about the, 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 the what, we, what I had started about the Psalm, Psalms 23. Um, in the book of Psalms, it's a, it's a prayer which uh, um, David did simply because the uh, you know he, he realized in his life that god is everything to him he realized that he is the protector he realized that he is the one who gives him life he's the one who gives him everything he realized that even if he goes through challenge so he he knew very well that god will not just uh, prevent him from going through a challenge so he knew that he will go through a challenge uh, but he knew knew he knows that he, he or he knew that God will always be um, his protector. But I said some can start be can begin to be a reality in our life once we have a relationship with God. Remember, it says the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. Because he actually knows and he's trusting that and he, he is very sure about what he is saying. It is not going to it is just going to be a chapter for others if we decide not to build our relationship. It will just be one of these other chapters which you read in the Bible. It's just going to be a, a, a chapter which is um, just there in the Bible. But I want you to think about why is it that God said you need to pray this prayer every time? That's what I need to think about. It is that which God is actually means in our life. He actually means it that he, when we believe, when we now have a relationship with him, and when once we build that relationship to, to that level, now that Psalm 23 is ours. And whatever it is declared in that Psalm 23, it is absolutely ours. And no, nothing, no one can take it away from us. But it is building that relationship, which is very, very key. And I want to then end by saying where, where it says, um, Surely goodness and love will follow me uh, for all the days of my life. So it means that the goodness, you have, don't have to chase it. That the goodness and love of God will follow you. You don't chase it, it will chase you. The key is building that firm relationship with God. Building that firm relationship with God. So that that, that chapter or that scripture becomes effective in your own life that is what is the key the scripture to become effective in your life the scripture uh, becoming relevant in your life that is key because sometimes you can even just read it and finish it and it doesn't make any sense but when you have got that relationship with god when you truly have got that uh, um close relationship with god then psalm chapter 23 becomes a real um life chapter in your life and means something to you on your individual life so building a relationship with god is what we've been talking about and we've really arrived to a, 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 a situation where we start to understand now that uh, once you have got a relationship that intense relationship with god it affects your obedience with god it's now god becomes an authority in your life you start to become um to, to believe what what he says and whatever he says in a, in your life becomes a reality may god of heaven help us and uh, i pray that you continue uh, to seek him don't waste time just coming to church because i want just to come to church uh, or without a purpose come to church with a purpose to cement your relationship to cement your trust in god to so that these all scriptures we are talking about we are reading becomes part of your life and start to relate to you may god bless you and uh, i am um uh, i believe that we'll, we'll be meeting soon but uh, may god continue to give you power and uh, let us continue to pray for each other and let us continue to uh, to be strong and and to live a life of purpose may god bless you amen